I've only been here for about two and a half months. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty new to this place. So yeah, so I do stuff um, with this, this stuff here. Um, I'm also in charge of collection tastings over at our imagery property. And I do some other stuff too. I was in Napa Valley for almost, for about four years though. Uh, Mike Benziger was actually on um, Wine Spectator. Um, That's amazing. Back a while, yeah. So he was right on the cover of that. Um, oh we were talking gosh. about biodynamic farming, things like that. And we have a, a final uh, uh, generation of Benzigers coming in now too, so. What do you think about this one? You like it? I love it. I love this so much. Good. It almost doesn't even look like wine in the glass, too. I know. It's so it's like crazy. Really and that's pretty awesome. I love it. Well, I'm going to go ahead uh, put this back, and then whenever you guys are all set with this, you can hop onto the tram and then we'll, we'll get going. So, one of the cool things I like to talk about on the property that we're going to see the first star right up here is the, uh, the olive trees. But the olive trees do a few different things for us. One, they, um, they actually act kind of like uh, erosion prevention. So we plant them on the ridge lines and things like that. It prevents erosion because they have really, really strong root systems. Yes, yeah, so we plant them close together like that. They also bring in um, a parasitic wasp that actually takes care of something for us called a glassy wing sharpshooter that will actually lay eggs inside of the rootstock itself. And they bury, bury themselves in there. And it'll actually cut off the irrigation source to the entire vine itself. And it'll kill it in two to three years. But we can't use pesticides. So right. that's one of yeah, those things in biodynamics yeah. where we plant things to bring in other things that kind of act like an entire self-sustained ecosystem within the parameters of the property itself. So pretty neat. Plus we get to make some pretty good biodynamic olive oil out of it, which is not a, yeah, not a bad bonus. Do you guys sell it here? <laughs> we do. Yeah, we sell it here in, in the tasting room. And we actually have a little olive oil tasting area if you guys want to go check that out at the end too. So down here, these are our reclamation ponds, is what we call them. Because we practice something called deficit irrigation or dry farming, is what it is. And the reason that we do it um, is to stress the vines in a sense to where the root systems have to dig deep down into the soil to look for water. We have a lot of surface area in contact with the root system itself. Um, and then, uh, because if you actually water too much, what will happen is the root system will turn around and come back up towards the easiest point of you know, where it can get its water. And when that happens and it's getting a ton of water in the vine itself, what happens is the grapes start to swell and it dilutes the lime. So you want to be as concentrated as stuff as you can get. So the volcano itself is responsible for a lot of the different soil types that we actually have on the property. Um, we have even obsidian, which we're going to check out in one of the, uh, one of the blocks coming up on the way back. But, um, what the volcanic soil does is it's very permeable, so it drains water very easy and um, you know, allows us to have concentrated flavors in the, in the grapes and in the wine itself. So this is where we were before. So right down here on this road we took at the bottom. Yeah. Um, so this is the zone. We let them go all over. Oh, they go yeah. everywhere? Mm -hmm. um, and then kind of cool to look at from up here too. We have the owl boxes that kind of take care of our rodent problem. <laughs> if we had one, which we don't really have one anymore because, because we, we have, have all these owls. owls. And then these oh red God. birdhouses that you'll see that bring in bluebirds. And those take care of aphids and things like that that are on the vines too. So I mean, keep going That's back so to the whole cool. fact of you know having all these things that take care of us stuff naturally. Yeah. Instead of having to blast all of your vines with pesticides and fungicides and things like that too. And we're not adding any sulfite. So you're gonna, you'll notice that if you do you know have that one extra glass, <laughs> it won't you know hurt you in the morning, which there is kind of cool. <laughs> this makes me feel like I really need to be upping my gardening game. Yeah, we go pretty <laughs> pretty extreme. I mean, like I was saying, it takes a long time to get certified. We hired like a team of scientists to come out and kind of get us all started and set up what we had to do because they're very, very strict to be certified by this thing right here. Mm -hmm. so we got about 29,000 square feet in the entire thing. I'll hold up to about 4,000 barrels inside with three different types of oak barrels that we use. We use French, American, and Hungarian. So you're going to get to kind of see those as we go in. Yeah, it's cool because it keeps the, the humidity at the perfect you know, percentage um, and it stays like 62 to 64 degrees most time of the year. So we're not really having to climate control this thing. That's the whole concept of why you really want to have your barrels in a cave. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> this, sounds, this smells exactly like the lion in Indiana Jones in Disneyland. Oh, oh it kind of does. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know exactly like what you're talking cave. about. Like moisture yeah. and like things like that. Yeah. yeah. These are all the barrels that we're using. These actually, these have wine in them right now too. Well, yeah, we got our own little cave drawings throughout the place, like a bear. Did you guys ever have like a party back here? We're having a party here tonight. Oh yeah, so you're yeah. inside the cave. Yeah, too, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll stay. Okay. We're gonna stay in the back side of the cave for the most okay. part, and then kind of stay outside in the barn area. Okay. So let me see if I can. Like literally, you're living my dream life. It's pretty fun. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> So 2014 Bella Luna 
Pinot Noir from Sonoma Coast Aviator. It's so loud in here. Like... Yeah, those fans are a little oh, noisy I right love now. This glass. Yeah, these, so this is like a burgundy glass. It's typically used for, for a Pinot. It gives it a lot of room to breathe, which is kind of nice. Lots of pretty. It is, yeah, for sure. Definitely a pretty light, light Pinot. Yeah, good. Really good. You're in Sonoma County. <laughs> what would you pair this with? I would even do that with like, you can do salmon even with that. I like pairing Pinots I with salmon if it's light enough like that. Me too. So if it's a light enough Pinot like that, then it's, in my opinion, good with salmon. You don't always have to do like the whites with fish and white meats and things like that and do red with you know, red meats and, and everything else like that. You can kind of experiment and find what you think works out too.